I've read in interviews that you talk about how you're very shy, and for such a, a terrific actor, you get shy sometimes when the attention is on you. For example, you hate it when people sing happy birthday to you. Yeah, I do. Yeah, <laughs> I actually relate to that. I, I don't love, I don't, really? lo I don't love it either. Uh, yeah, I don't love it either. I don't like praise for something that I didn't have anything to do with. <laughs> and that's not a joke. Exactly. I really do feel like people are happy. But, and what are you, you're supposed yeah. to just stand there and go, yes, I survived. It's so day. embarrassing. <laughs> So you, you, you hate it when people give you that kind of attention. Yeah, like when you wrap a film, they announce it, and everyone starts clapping, and I always, I hate it. I always get turned bright red, and I just get really embarrassed. Because they don't do it for everyone. They don't do it for the crew. They don't, so I just always feel like really weird about it. Right, because they're singling you out in a way. Yeah, they should sing happy birthday to the parents, to my parents. Yes, because yeah. they're the ones that actually did something. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um... Oh, hi, for you. I mean, I thought Rose was in the middle. Yeah, for me, six years. And you seem to have stayed out of the showbiz zone, <laughs> the party zone, and all of that. Is that a conscious effort? You're... I, I honestly wouldn't even know where to find it. I don't, I don't, where is that? <laughs> there are people like here? with a rope trying to bring you in all the time? <laughs> I wouldn't even know where to go. <laughs> I'm not trying to avoid it. I just don't even know where it you is. You don't even know where the party is yeah. to, to ask at the door whether no. you can get in. Where, are you a person who likes to do all that to stuff? Party, to party? Like well, no. Do you I mean, like the, you know, discos every night or are you? No. Um, no. Mm -hmm. I like to be with, uh, you know, I, it's not that I'm, you know, I like to, to go out and I like to hang out with friends, but I'm, I don't like being in loud, crowded spaces. It's very overwhelming to me. And I'd love for you to talk a little bit more, I've already talked to you a little bit about this, about his, David Fincher and his Enneagram. It's not his, but the personality test that David Fincher uses mm -hmm. on each of his films. Can you tell us about that? Sure, this is this, when I talk about this, everyone always thinks it's like, sounds like a cult, like a, it's like the new Scientology or something. It's not. Actually, you know, the, the, the Catholic Church has endorsed this. <laughs> they, de Funny. they have not. Um, it's this thing called the Enneagram, and it's sort of like a Myers-Briggs. It's a personality sort of categ categorization. And um, right before we started shooting Girl with a Dragon Tattoo, David st started talking to me about it. He made me take the test so that I could find out what number I was. And he assigns each character whatever number they are. And I, I found it to be super helpful. I became sort of obsessed with it for a while. I made everyone I know take it. And, um, <laughs> it's really, it's very interesting, especially for an actor to have as a tool and, and for a director. And, um, you know, you told me to take it, and I did. Oh, what number are you? Oh, I don't want to say. I'm, you're that's... a three? You're, you're, you're not a three? No, actually, that's... <laughs> <laughs> you tell me yours, I'll tell you mine. I'm a fi five with a four, or sometimes a four with a five, but... I'm a nine. Oh, really? <laughs> Do you know if you're an eight wing or a one wing? No, I haven't I gone that deep. I bet it's a one. The nine is the peacemaker, so yeah. you're... Probably. That's why I'm a moderator, I think. Right. But Passive actually, when aggressive. I read the description of the personality, it was frightening how accurate yeah. it was. It was, it terrified me, actually, just to see how it, it like, was basically looking into a mirror. Yeah, okay, this is good. I feel like now I can, I'm going to know how to, I'm going to know how to relate to you better now. Oh, good. A five. A five and a nine, that's an okay? Yeah, I mean, I, yeah, I don't think we should get married or anything, but it's... Really? <laughs> We're already dressed up. <laughs> um, <laughs> sorry. Uh, That's an odd thing for a nine to say. <laughs> I wasn't expecting that. Um, F fives tend to be loners. They, they like to spend a lot of time alone. Um, they're like the... It's, out of all the numbers, they're probably the least likely, the most likely to not get married. So. You have a boyfriend. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and I have a boyfriend. Yes. Good. Um, and dogs. So yes, you're not I... a loner. Well, not no, really. No, no. Yeah, I have a small little tribe. Okay, so 
Does do these two dresses kind of describe who you are? No. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Then describe. Okay. You're very shy, but you were you tried bartending for a while, and and yeah. it seemed like to be a bartender, you you need to really be able to deal with a lot of strangers. And how, how could you have done that? I don't know. One of my friends was going to the school, and so I it sounded like fun. Yeah. And so I went, and then I got my little bartending license, and then I got a job, and I didn't realize that. Like, you know, people always want the bartender to drink with them. And I can have, like, two drinks, and then I'm just blacked out. Right. And so I was like, you know, and I'm, again, I'm very shy, so it was, I was just drunk, and it was just bad. <laughs> <laughs> so you were just passed out behind the bar yeah, I don't maybe even 45 really, minutes into your I first... I don't even really remember. But that was my last, <laughs> first and last time as a You may bartender. have choked a lot of people while you were passed out. <laughs> She is nominated Best Supporting Actress for Carol. It's a fantastic movie. Thank Are you, you feeling like, you know, this could be your year? No, no. I, I know I'm not going to win. But I'm very happy to be here regardless. Yeah. Uh, what is it, five, six nominations? Six nominations for the movie? Yeah, yeah. Is it any added pressure when you're in a field, where, when you're in a movie where it's been nominated for so many? You're like, well, at least I have to get one of them. I don't know. I mean, I think we know we're probably going to lose all six. So yeah. we're just, it kind of makes it better. We're just going to have a lot of fun Tonight. There's no pressure. We're all just gonna get a little drunk and have fun. <laughs> Wait a minute. The SAG Awards, isn't that where everyone kind of gets drunk? I've been mean, getting drunk at all of them, yeah. so um, yeah, yeah. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. Last question. Hi, congratulations again. Thank you. How is this whole process of the events and the guessing uh, about who's gonna win and, and the interview after interview, how has that changed you, do you think? <laughs> how has it changed me? Um, I don't know that it's changed me but um you know it's a very I, i've obviously been through this process one other time and i was slightly younger then and very new to it all so it was um it felt like a much different experience that time and now i sort of know what to expect more but it's um you know it's kind of it, it there's two hands to it it's a huge honor and it's such a great way to celebrate all of our films but then on the other hand it can be very overwhelming and sometimes it feels like We've been celebrating the same person's birthday for months on end, and like it's just never gonna stop. We did a conversation, you and I, before a Q&A, where um, we were laughing because there's some buzz on Twitter about everyone wanting there be a, to be a sequel to Carol, people really demanding that. And we were laughing, but I actually thought later it's actually kind of sweet of them because they see the end of the movie, and like when you finish a really great book or yeah. any great film, you um, you feel a little grief because you're not part of that world anymore. You're yeah. not part. You're not with those those characters. And of course, the ending is so uplifting and just you swoon. But then you obviously people out there, and I'm one of them, just wanted to keep going. Did you experience that as a as a child or as an adolescent? That that feeling of wanting to be inside of a fictional world, and did that lead to the spark that made you want to become an actress? Yeah, certainly. I mean, I played with dolls and played make-believe until I was far too old for it. It was really, it's really embarrassing now when I think back at how old I was when I was like, playing a house. Um, and even as an adult, I get that. I mean, I have a really hard time. When I read a book that I love, I kind of, I can't read another book for weeks, sometimes months after, because I just don't want to, I can't imagine being in any other world except for the world that I was in in that book. Um, so yeah, I definitely have that. I mean, what movie doesn't make me cry? Um, I'm a really easy crier in movies. <laughs> um, I remember when I saw Toy Story 3, I was, it was while we were shooting Girl with the Dragon Tattoo and it was after the sort of week we did all of the rape scenes. I watched that on my computer and literally was like scream crying. I mean, I was so upset at the end of that movie. I just cried myself to sleep. No, not when they go into the fire, whenever finally Andy has decided to take his toys and he's gonna give them to this other little girl who doesn't have any toys. And you know, the entire movie, they've just, that's all they want is for Andy to play with them again because he's all grown up now, he doesn't play with them anymore. You know, then they go through the whole journey, they almost die in the fire, and then Andy brings the toys to this little girl who doesn't have any toys. So he takes them out of the box and he starts showing her how to play with them. And they're so, I'm going to cry just talking about it. They're so happy to finally have like one last time with Andy playing with them. So I love that movie. What of what we've seen of you, Rooney Mara, on stage or screen or whatever you do to perform, it comes closest to who you are? To who I am in real life? In real life. 
Yeah, <laughs> that person. I'm looking, you know. Um, Who is she? I don't know that any of them do. I mean, there's a... Um, I think that everything that I've done has a little piece of me, but none of them are fully me. I mean, there's a lot about Lisbeth that I felt very close to and related to in a lot of ways. And then there's a lot about Therese that I related to. Not so much me now, but when I was younger, I, there was a lot about me that I could relate to in that part. There's usually always one little part of a character that I feel I can relate to. But I also love the girl with the dragon tattoo, and I gotta you give did. you props once again. I haven't seen it yet, so otherwise I would have said that. What do you want? Whoa, hold on, time out, time out. <laughs> you haven't seen this movie yet? No. Come on, you should have called me. I already took you. You could have rolled out with me. We could have watched it together. Yeah, really... I'm waiting. I'm waiting for it to come out so I can see it with. Are you gonna go see it with some real people? Yeah, I want to see it with oh, some real is, people. That's the best way to do. You gotta see it with some real people, <laughs> and go see it with some real people in the hood. Yeah. Cause they talk back to the screen. They'll no, let I you don't want to see it with people who talk back to the no, screen. No, I don't on. like that. You don't? Why? Why don't you like that? <laughs> Because it's distracting. Okay, go see it in a quiet setting. I'm going to. All right, but it is, I'm going to let you on a little secret. What? It's good. It is. Do you like watching? Or not, are you okay not with really. watching? Not really. I mean, I like, like, I, I like watching maybe isolated scenes that I'm not in. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, I can watch some scenes that I'm in and maybe, maybe like them. But um, it's hard to watch it as a whole. It's hard to, like, not... It's hard to take yourself out of it. It's hard to not, like... Um, remember what it was like on that day that you shot or what your experience it's hard to remove yourself from the experience of it. When you do a, um, a modeling campaign is it hard to see yourself on the like billboards? It's really hard. It is? Mm -hmm. So you avoid, you don't like to look at the oh. Galvin Klein downtown campaign? I don't know how I'm gonna go anywhere. She's the, she know that? She's everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> um, Rooney, uh, Omar asks, uh, the characters you play are mostly known for being aggressive and unconventional. Are you more drawn to playing broken types? And are we going to see you in more comedies? More? Uh, yeah, I think I am more drawn to playing um, people who have sort of more darkness in them or who are broken. Um, people keep asking me that today if I'm going to mm -hmm. do a comedy. I just don't think I'm very funny. I think you are. You do. <laughs> <laughs> maybe someday, maybe a dark comedy, but I don't know. I don't. Do you feel like you want to just sit on a beach in Fiji somewhere between now and then, or do you feel like, like, let's say they came to you and said, "We want to do this in four months from now." Would that be okay for you, or are you thinking, "Can I make a romantic comedy between now and then?" <laughs> Beaches and romantic comedies are not my thing. No. <laughs> Can, yeah, can I can do a little beat thing for you, like? No, I'm not gonna sing. Oh, come on, just that no slightest. Way. I, I think that you should sing. I'll do it. I could do. Hey, Jew. Keep going. Don't make it bad. Come on. Take a sad <laughs> song <laughs> and make it better. Oh, really? <laughs> there. Come on, Rooney. Come no, on. You don't want to This is your chance. Sing. We can do yeah, that one phrase. The, what's the refrain we can do? We can do la 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 la. There's la. no way we can get Rooney, you. Rooney, this will get you on anything. stage. No, I want to do no singing. When I do theater, it's going to be straight drama. No singing. You told me you listened. You went to I Rent love and Les musical Miserables theater. a I love it. times, and you can't do it. I la. can't. Oh. You'll never sing. I refuse to accept it. Not on and the even Not without preparation. They've been kind of impossible to me. I'm still telling <laughs> you. You need to see side effects. This is this is a good movie for right now. So thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Look at I could see it. You wanted to do it. You I do. I'll do it later when I'm in the shower or in the car. You know we end in song, and you know you've broken my heart now. At least a uh, trinity. I don't remember. I don't... Yeah, you do. You did once give me something. What did I it was do? a slight, I don't want to put it in your head because I'm just looking for, because I know you in the shower you must hum, you must do something. <laughs> That's so simple. I would be, I have a dog, I'm always singing something to her. You know what I used to do with my dogs actually, which was really good training for Carol, which I didn't even realize, is I constantly just speak to them in like a 50s dialect. Well, okay, I'll take that, no, and we'll set it to music. I no, can't. you would do I it in the 50s. It. It's always I can't. I, I forgive you almost, even though you could see the disappointment. Next time I come in, I'm gonna, I'll bring a pre-recorded version of something yeah. you did and while you were you. private, and then you'll do it. Yeah. I have a social media question for you. Oh. Actors are very curious beasts. <laughs> what? <laughs> What 
are you curious about? And how has that curiosity changed your life? Go. Five words or less. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, I don't know. I'm actually like an, I'm a compulsive Googler. I Google things constantly um, that you I'm go curious about. You just, go you have an idea in your head and you say. Yeah, and I'll look it up and then it'll like take me to YouTube and then I'll find something else that's really interesting and then I don't even know how I got there. You just Google it yourself. You just Google your name. Oh God, no. All day. I'm not, I'm not and allowed to Google Yahoo myself. And then you Yahoo your name. <laughs> <laughs> Yahoo, please. <laughs> Come on. Is Yahoo passe? <laughs> I haven't used Yahoo since the early 2000s. <laughs> yes, uh, w but I don't know what the latest thing. I mean, after I saw The Big Short, I went home and was like on a Googling rampage because I wanted I, See, I wanted great. to understand it. And that's that's I that is the hope. I think that's the hope of that movie. Yeah. That that's Adam. That's our director's hope is that it could get people to Google it and, and or Yahoo it and understand, yeah. get, gain a greater understanding, just start a conversation about it. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I definitely Googled that when I got home, but I, then I also Google really random, <laughs> really random weird stuff. I think everybody does. Yeah. Well, just to have that information at the, at, at I mean, if someone saw your search history, I would just, I think I would. Oh, someone's looking at it <laughs> right now. It's out there. So Your search history is definitely out there. And all the medical questions that I ask on there, it's like, <laughs> my foot hurts, what does this mean? <laughs> Why is one ear bigger than the other? Does that mean it I'm totally going to have It totally is, a... by the way. Or oh, at least you... like one is... Everyone's ears, that's, I was talking about myself, everyone's... <laughs> Do you know that your ears and your nose never stop growing? That's such good news for I me. I learned that. On I am so, ex especially the nose thing. I am so <laughs> excited about. I don't know. There's these three ladies that are so smart and beautiful yeah, and cool, and I feel like we should talk to them <laughs> because they have so this much to say. No, Rooney, please. No. <laughs> Rooney, don't do that. They flew you out here. I'm so sorry, everyone. <laughs> Poor kid, she's nervous. I wonder why you decided um, not to ever um, identify Samantha in an avatar or have them have some kind of an engagement in cyberspace. I, I like the fact that you didn't, but I wonder why you didn't venture in that direction. Um, why we didn't, uh, why, um, the, uh, you, you, both of you guys went to college, right? <laughs> you didn't? Yes, you did. No, I didn't. Did you? you oh. No, I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> but, okay, so Rooney, you could answer this yeah. then, as the only college graduate. I, the question was, for, like, specifically at you. I have no idea why you didn't decide to use an avatar. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> yeah. One of the most uh, sort of beautiful and very enigmatic lines in the movie is when Kate says about you, what a strange girl you are, flung out of space. Yes. How did you internalize that description? I mean, is it possible to? It's so, it's so spooky a way of... It is. It's a very strange thing to say, but um, I wouldn't find it strange if someone said it to me. I would, <laughs> it would make sense, I guess. I, th I mean, I, I found it, I found it uh, incredible working ac across from you because I didn't, I, I couldn't, I found it hard to read her, <laughs> um, which I've realized is, is clearer when you watch it as an audience member, but sometimes as an actor, it kept me really uh, on my toes. And that's, a, that's an exciting feeling. Mm -hmm. I think if you, if you settle in, you sometimes feel like you're kind of, the energy's dead. And I, I didn't ever feel that with Rooney. And I felt the same when I was watching it. I, it kind of kept me intrigued. So see, you're bringing us to you. We have to try to figure <laughs> you out. That's what that is. Something I found in, in watching your performance specifically was that by the end of it, I was, you know, you can hang on people's words in movies. I was hanging on your face. <laughs> I was like, and I know that sounds odd, but I was watching you and by the end, because the character you, you portray it has, has such a, a steady demeanor mm -hmm. to her that 
by the end, I was, I was really, I would examine every part of your face in every frame to see where you were going, you know, where the character was going, to trying to figure out what was going on inside of you. Mm -hmm. And it was... It A was, lot of people in my personal life feel that way. <laughs> <laughs> it was fascinating, though. What is she thinking? What, it's, what but mood that's, is she in? That, but, you know, when you've heard, you know, when, when they say if you really want I think it's a commercial, actually. If you want someone's attention, whisper. You know, mm. it, when to try to break through the cacophony of all this information and everything happening, sometimes to just take it really, really subtle. Alan Arkin would always do that. He would mm. just go under everybody else, and that's what you were drawn into. And I felt like your performance was that way because it was so... Um, it was so nuanced that I, I was just, I was like, I was hanging on every moment and uh, I don't know. Thank you. So what do you have to say about that? How did you do that? I feel really that? awkward. Look at how beautiful this one is. I know, porcelain. My God. <laughs> Michelangelo Seriously. made her. Thank you. A question about acting um, in, in a very emotional scene. When you're leaving Carol's house and back on the train and you start to cry mm -hmm. just because you're it's all the stuff just kind of building up in one moment. Um, but you have to emote that way, but also seem like you're trying not to, mm -hmm. right? Because you're in a public, <laughs> you're on a train, and you don't want everyone looking at you. How do you do that? Well, I mean, isn't that the only way to cry? Who, <sighs> I mean, it's very rare in anyone's lifetime where they really just let themselves cry. I mean, usually when a person is crying, they are trying to fight it in some way. At least that's how I live my repressed life. But, <laughs> um, so that's kind of, there's just certainly on a train, um, that, that was the way to go, I mean. <laughs> Is it easy for you? To cry? It just depends, that was really, um, that, that was really easy that time, but it just depends where you are in your life and also what's happening. You know, I don't normally like take things from my own life to make myself cry, I don't, do that I believe I am in the moment I am the person and these things are happening to me but that particular day I did have some sort of horrible personal things happening to me so oh. it was I was in a more emotional space as it was so it made it easier. Kate's character Carol is always has the makeup the hair the outfits yeah. you have to behave whether you're an amateur photographer as well and looking at the world through that lens but you're also somebody who is a shop girl selling things to people and having to present yourself into it so there's a really slow build up to what's going to happen with this relationship I feel very much I can relate to that because I I'm an observer and I love watching people mm -hmm. and um, I consider myself that, but I'm also sort of have to sell things to people, <laughs> and it you can do. be quite uncomfortable. <laughs> when the movie premiered in Cannes at the film festival back in May, um, you were awarded the festival's Best Actress Prize. Was that a surprise to you? Yes, of course. <laughs> no, well, I wasn't. I was expecting it. No. I mean, <laughs> yes, I was back. I had flown home, and I was um, in... I was up early because I had jet lag and I was, it was six in the morning or something and I was doing my laundry. I was alone in my house, you know, in my pajamas. I was definitely not, not expecting that. Yeah, I just mentioned that. It just seems like it wasn't even um, from, the, from the publicity material, it wasn't the obvious choice in some ways because Kate is this swan-like big star and yet um, I thought the jury really did recognize something in you that requires um, a certain, I think a certain soulfulness in the viewer to sort of pick up on, so. Yeah, I mean, it's not always easy in life or in film to be sort of the quiet person in the room. Right. Especially in today's day and age where sort of extroversion is so much, um, so much more appreciated by our society than introversion. And, um, but you know, you can't have one without the other. 